Hi, I'm Annie of ByAnnie.com and Patterns by Annie. Welcome to episode number 27 of season two of Live with Annie. In today's episode, we're going to introduce our brand new pattern, Night and Day. We'll talk about the features of this fun multi-compartmented purse and reversible tote and share, and share tips for gathering fabrics and supplies to make the set. We're also going to talk about ways to quilt the fabrics for the project, so stay tuned. We are so tickled that you all made time to join us today. It's always a treat to see our regular viewers joining us from all around the world and to welcome new viewers to our community as well. We know that there are lots of things all of you could be doing with this time, and the fact that you made time to be with us really means a lot. Be sure to leave a comment to let us know from where you are joining us and whether you are a new or returning viewer. I know that lots of people have watched every single episode of Live with Annie, so let us know if that includes you. It's really nice to be back in person with you all. I had a great time at the H&H &H show in Chicago, and I thoroughly enjoyed my time at the Old Country Store in Pennsylvania. As Casey showed you last week, his last minute building plans created a beautiful booth and everything worked out beautifully at the show. David, who is our warehouse manager, and Brooke, who is our social media marketing guru, joined us to work in the booth. And we enjoyed meeting lots of wonderful people there, including some of the winners from our 2022 local quilt shop contest. Chuck and Gail from Beach Time Quilts in Ocean Shores, Washington stopped by to visit, as did Maureen from Palm Beach Quilts in Carom Downs, Australia. Maureen was even one of the panelists on the State of the Industry keynote presentation. Attendees at the show told us how much they enjoyed all the classes and lectures, as well as the interesting assortment of booths. With vendors from around the world, there was something for everyone. I especially loved being in person with customers again and especially enjoyed the happy buzzing vibe of the show. You could definitely tell that people were ready to gather in person again. My time at the Old Country Store was also really fun. What an amazing store and an amazing team. It was so fun to see their wide selection of sewing supplies as well as handmade quilts local handmade crafts and delicacies, and kitchen equipment. Dean and Jan and their staff treated me royally, taking me on a tour of a local gem, Longwood Gardens, as well as tours of a variety of Amish businesses, including a soap maker, a hand quilter, and a flower grower. That area was so beautiful and so very peaceful. I have to say I was very tempted to move there. On Monday night, I presented a lecture sharing the story of how Biani came to be and also sharing a trunk show of Biani patterns. On Tuesday, I enjoyed a delightful day teaching a catch-all caddy class to a lovely group of makers. Andrea Hoke, who is the store's Biani expert, was a great help in the class and I really enjoyed meeting her. I know that everyone is in great hands with Andrea. One of the highlights of the trip for me was getting to meet Randy Jones, who is the creator of the Biani Bagmakers group on Facebook, as well as other members of the group who came to the lecture in class. Randy is such a delightful lady, and I so appreciate the wonderful group of makers that she has brought together. Started just over a year ago, the Biani Bagmakers group recently hit 25,000 members with members in over 90 countries. It is a wonderfully talented, supportive, positive, and inspiring group. So if you are not already a member, be sure to check them out. Randy is planning a catch-all caddy slow along to start soon, probably August or September, she said, and she'll be announcing more details in the coming weeks. We're going to put up a link so that you can find the group easily. Since I was on the road last week, our weekly episode became Live with Casey. He shared a little history of the Biani website and then offered tips for using the site, including how to find shops using the LQS Contest leaderboard and interactive map, and how to enlarge the photos in the photo gallery. 
I have to say, I didn't know that tip, so I was really glad to be reminded of that. I'm sure he's shown it to me before, but if you don't use it, I don't always remember. So I was happy to see that again. If you missed that episode or you want to watch it again, remember that you can find all the previous 78 episodes of Live with Annie on our Facebook page, our YouTube channel, or at byannie.com live. We will put up all the links to make them easy for you to find. Okay. So today we are really excited to announce a brand new pattern called Night and Day. This pattern includes instructions for a multi-compartmented purse as well as a reversible mini tote. They make it really easy to quickly change your look night or day. The purse and mini tote are perfect to sew in coordinating fabrics, and they can be used together or as separate pieces. So I've got a purse that I have been carrying for the past several weeks, and I can tell you that this has quickly become my very favorite purse. What I especially love about it are the two separate zippered compartments so I can keep my business needs separate from my personal needs. And I also love this handy slip compartment in between where I can put my phone and my keys. I gave one of the prototypes of this pattern to my sister, and she uses the tote every time we sh go shopping. She also says that it's perfect for when she goes to the pool. She can put in her towel, her water bottle, her book, her sunglasses, everything that she needs for a day down at, at the pool or at the beach. So we are going to start today's episode by playing the introduction and a closer look videos for night and day. And then I'll be back to talk about what you'll need to make the bags and also to share some quilting tips. Hi, I'm Annie with ByAnnie.com and Patterns by Annie. I am excited to tell you about our pattern Night and Day, which includes instructions for two awesome projects, a multi-compartment purse and a reversible mini tote. This versatile set of bags makes it easy to carry all the essentials and quickly change your look, night or day. Night and Day was designed in answer to lots of requests from you, our customers. You've asked for a pattern for a simple, small purse, one with dividers that you can use to carry essentials. Night and Day's simple-to-make multi-compartment purse ticks all those boxes. There's one handy compartment for makeup and personal care items, another compartment for pens, pencils, receipts, and a small wallet, and a slip compartment in between for a phone and keys or other items you need to get to quickly. This perfectly sized purse can be carried in a variety of ways as a clutch, over the shoulder, or crossbody. You've also asked for simple projects with minimal or no quilting and bindings. Night and Day's Extra Easy Reversible Mini Tote is the perfect answer. It uses little quilting, no binding, and its ingenious construction ensures a beautiful finish all around. You will be so impressed with how easy it is to make. Both the night and day purse and the mini tote are constructed of fabric stabilized with soft and stable, so they have great body and stability and really stand up and hold their shape. The purse has one slip and two zippered compartments to separate and organize all your essentials. An easy to open magnetic flap covers the center slip compartment. A fabric border covers the magnets and adds interest to the front of the purse. Attach the carrying strap to rings attached to the sides between the compartments, or go light and remove the strap to carry the purse as a clutch. If you're headed out for a day of shopping, slip the purse into the tote and carry just one bag into the store. As your purchases accumulate, remove the purse and you've got an extra tote ready to go. How easy is that? The mini tote opens wide for easy access and may be easily reversed for two fun looks, a quilted side or a non-quilted side with a welt pocket. A tie closure at top brings in the sides to keep everything secure. The tote may be carried with its attached handles 
or can be easily converted to a shoulder or crossbody bag just by clipping the purse's carrying strap to the rings on the outside. You or someone you love is sure to appreciate these roomy, versatile, organizational bags. They're perfect to carry when shopping or running errands, or to carry lunch, paperwork, and all the day's needs to the office. Crafters will appreciate an easy-to-access tote for carrying their project to the ballpark or doctor's office. Choose fabrics to complement your look and style, whatever the occasion. Whether your outfit calls for basic black or a riot of color, Night and Day has you covered. The Night and Day pattern includes step-by-step -step instructions to make both of these professionally finished projects. We also filmed an add-on video to help you with the more unique or challenging aspects of the pattern. Ask for Night and Day at your local quilt shop or find it at byannie.com. If you have more questions, be sure to watch the A Closer Look video, which gives more info about gathering supplies and customizing the project. Whether you're just running errands or headed out for an evening on the town, you are sure to love this versatile person tote. Hi, I'm Annie with ByAnnie.com and Patterns by Annie, and I'd like to give you a little more information about our pattern night and day. The majority of each project is assembled while it's flat, making construction extra easy. Each compartment of the purse is made with a strip of fabric to which a zipper is attached. The strip folds around to make the front and back of that compartment. The two compartments are joined to create a handy slip opening in the middle of the purse. The mini tote is made by quilting the main fabric to the soft and stable to form the exterior of the body. A welt pocket is attached to the interior which is not quilted. The main and lining pieces are shaped and joined to form the finished tote. Since there are no bindings on the tote, assembly is extra quick and easy. The night and day pattern recommends just two fabrics for each project. For the purse, this includes a main fabric which is used for the exterior, the flap, and the carrying strap, and a lining fabric used for the interior and the border on the front. For the tote, the main fabric is used for the exterior, handles, and ties, and the lining fabric is used for the interior and the welt pocket. Of course, if you prefer to mix things up or add more fabrics, you can certainly do that. Just know that you'll need to come up with your own cutting layouts, and you may need different amounts of fabrics than what is called for on the supply list. Directional fabrics will work fine for this project, and the pattern includes tips for their use. Since the pieces needed for these bags are fairly small, they are a perfect project for quilting on domestic machines. If you need more information about quilting, please check out our free patterns, Peacekeeper and Easy Does It. You'll find lots of tips for quilting in the add-on videos for those projects. You will find a full list of supplies on the back cover of the night and day pattern. If you don't yet have the pattern, you can also find the list on the night and day product page at byannie.com. Just click on the supply list tab. We had so much fun making these bags using a variety of fabrics. Since they're such easy pieces to quilt, we also experimented with a number of quilting designs. We fussy cut some great directional fabrics to make this fun set of bags. We centered the flamingos on the front and back of the tote and also centered the diamonds on the purse. I think I need to plan a trip to the Florida Keys to show them off. I can use the mini tote to carry my project in process to keep me occupied on my trip, and the purse will be perfect for carrying my toiletries, phone, and essentials, both on the flight and on the ground. To mirror the fabric's design, we quilted 60-degree diamonds on the purse. On the tote, we did a basic crosshatch grid. On this purse, we used just one fabric for the exterior of the purse, strap, and border. And we used that same fabric for the interior of the mini tote. 
That gives a classy subdued look that can be changed up quickly just by reversing the mini tote to showcase the dark fabric on the exterior. To make this beautiful set of bags, we use just a single fabric. This beautiful ombre fabric gradated from black to brown to gold and then back to black. We used the darker parts to cut the pieces for the exterior of the purse, with the lighter parts for the lining. We had just enough fabric left to cut the fabric with the dark in the middle for the exterior of the tote and the light in the middle for the interior. We fussy cut the fabric for the handles, positioning it so that the bottom of the strap matched the front of the tote exterior. I love how just one fabric can produce so many different looks, perfect for night or day. On the purse, we quilted straight vertical lines, spacing them random widths apart to echo the randomness of the fabric's design. To keep the focus on the fabric and give a more tailored look, we skipped the quilting on the exterior of the mini tote. We made this classy set using a leather look vinyl with a cotton lining. We skipped the quilting on the purse and the exterior of the tote and folded the vinyl in thirds to make the handles and strap. The night and day purse and mini tote are small projects with just a few pieces, so either would make a great afternoon or weekend sewing project for confident beginners to more advanced makers. The project involves basic skills used in many Biani patterns, and to help ensure success, we've filmed an add-on video. It will help you conceptualize the project and take you step by step through the more unique parts of the pattern. The night and day pattern is fun and surprisingly easy to make. You'll love carrying the purse and mini tote together or apart and will appreciate how easy it can be to quickly change your look, night or day. We can't wait to see what you make and how you use these versatile bags, so be sure to share pictures of your finished projects with us. Okay, I hope you enjoyed learning a little bit more about night and the night and day purse and mini tote, how they're designed, and ways that you can use them. It's really fun to choose fabrics that give you a variety of looks for night or day. They are fun to sew, and I think you're going to be thrilled with how easy they are to make. So let's talk a little bit more about the supplies that you'll need to make this handy set. As we said earlier, each project uses just two fabrics. So you'll need, I'm going to pull some fabrics out here and show you this set. So you'll need three quarters of a yard of a main fabric and three quarters of a yard of a lining fabric for each, um, each set. So I, we had a whole lot of fun picking fabrics for this set and I wanted to show you kind of the options that we did. So for the purse, we used um, this black dot and we used a different fabric for the lining. This one would be a perfect one for the lining and for the tote we used this fun kind of a panel print. So if you look at this you're going to see that it's got, it may not be one that you would normally think of using for a purse but we took the bottom part here and used it for the tote. So as you can see it goes all the way around with this section and we could have taken this section and used it for the purse. We happened to have the black dot fabric left over from another project that we had made already quilted so we didn't have to worry about that. On the purse we picked, I'm not sure what we picked for the lining, okay so we did pick this floral print but we wanted something a little more solid for the border so we used the same fabric that we used for the lining of the tote for that. So it gave us a fun way to mix things up. And I can tell you that we oftentimes on these bags ended up using a fabric for the border that didn't necessarily match the lining. Because a lot of times on linings, we'll pick a more solid or a lighter fabric. And that didn't always work for the lining. So a lot of times we took the fabric that was the lining of the tote and used it for the border to kind of make them um, pull things together and make them match. So three quarters of a yard 
of two fabrics is enough, but feel free to mix and match as you want. I already showed this one in the video, but I wanted to just reiterate what we did on this one. Um, so we did one fabric for everything, which I also did on the purse that I've been carrying. So we did the border. You have to have a border on these to cover the magnets. Um, so you have to have something on there, but if you want it to blend and have just a one color look, you can certainly do that. And again, just as we mentioned in the video, if you are going to do that, you're going to have to figure out your layouts and your yardage requirements. But because there are so few pieces for these, that's going to be really easy to do. All right, you're also going to need some thread for your project. And I believe I put that inside the purse here. Yes, I did. So again, we like using SoFine number 50. It's a polyester thread. And we suggest for this project that you choose threads to match all of the fabrics that you're using. To give the bags um, good body and stability, you're going to want some soft and stable. And this comes in black or in white. Uh, we suggest using black if you're using darker fabrics. Black would be perfect for these fabrics. White if you've got lighter fabrics, especially if your linings are light. You're also going to need a little bit of fusible interfacing, um, and that is used underneath or in the border when you cover the magnets. It also is used to stabilize the lining on the tote, which is reversible. The interfacing on the border prolongs the life of the magnets, and it gives a really smooth, crisp appearance to both of those pieces. You're also going to need some zippers, and you need just one 30-inch double-slide zipper to do both of the zippers on the purse. You use one half of the tape on one compartment, the other half of the tape on the other compartment, and then you bring them together with the two pulls that come on the zipper. For this little welt pocket that goes on the tote, I'm gonna turn this inside out so you can see it a little bit better. You just need a 12 inch single slide zipper for this. So if you're buying um, by any handbag zippers, we'd suggest either getting a 24 inch single slide or getting a 30 inch. And either way, you're going to have some leftover tape um, that you can make another zipper or if you're using zippers by the yard, you can make just the length you need using that. Um, you can do a coordinating color. Like on here, we did black, which pretty much coordinated. This one shows up a little bit more. Here's a fun set where we chose a very contrasting color on the top, and then on the pocket on the tote, we picked a color that blended in more, so it gives you a more subtle look. So have fun choosing zippers and, and picking something that's going to be just what you want. So there's also a carrying strap on the purse and some handles on the tote, and these are reinforced with one inch strapping. You need two yards for the purse. You need a yard and a half for the mini tote. So we'd recommend that you get a six yard. And again, these are one inch strapping. For the purse, you're also going to need a little bit of hardware. You need two D-rings, which are attached to tabs between the two compartments, and those are used for attaching the carrying strap. And then for the carrying strap, you need two swivel hooks to attach it to the bag, a wide mouth slider to make it adjustable, and that's all you need for that. Note that the carrying strap is designed that if you want to take it off here, you can also use it on the purse. And for doing that, we added I'll turn this back right side out, or exterior side out. I guess there's no right or wrong since it's reversible. Um, but we added some D-rings or triangle rings, either one will work on here, um, to the handles. And so you can hook your um, carrying strap on that if you would rather carry it over your shoulder or cross body. So again, these are all one inch hardware and we have one inch hardware in antique brass uh, black metal or nickel, so you can use the color that really matches your project well. The last thing that you're going to need is a set of invisible magnets, and those are used to attach underneath the border so that you can close your flap, and um, they come in sets of two, so you're going to have an extra magnet for another purse or some other project. So that's everything that you need to make 
night and day. Not a lot of project or not a lot of supplies. Um, because it's just a little bit of fabric, there's a good chance you probably have fabrics in your stash that you can use. So um, have fun shopping your stash or visiting your favorite local quilt shop to find the perfect fabric. All right, let's talk next about some of the ways we quilted. We covered some of that in the um, video, but I thought I'd do a little bit more. Because of the way this pattern is designed, um, you've got small pieces that you're doing, and on the tote in particular, you're only quilting the main fabric to the soft and stable. There's no quilting on the lining. For those reasons, rather than sending it off to a long arm quilter, we quilted the fabrics for all of these models. And because we're not experts at quilting, we just used a walking foot and we did straight lines on everything. But we had a whole lot of fun experimenting with some different patterns for the project. And I thought I'd show you a few of those. So on this tote, we just quilted straight lines and we did them vertically and then we did horizontally. So the first thing we did is we quilted two lines basically in the middle that were a half an inch apart and then we skipped over one and a half inches and we did another set. And we continued that all the way across both sides of the fabric and then we rotated it 90 degrees and did the same thing so that we had the horizontal lines. Again, for the purse, as I told you earlier, um, on this one we actually had leftover quilted fabric from another project. So this one was quilted on a long arm, but for the most part on the others, we just cut the fabrics that we needed according to the pattern and quilted the individual pieces that way. Again, on the exterior of this tote, actually I don't think we showed this up close in the video, and this is one of my favorites, so I do want to show you this one. So Marianne, who does most of our sewing, um, I, I, I gave her a few ideas and pictures and she really ran with them. So on here, she did a um, crosshatch grid, but she started by marking lines with her at a 45 degree angle, one inch apart. And after she had those stitched, she went back and stitched an eighth of an inch on each side of that. Jake, can you see that pretty well? It's one of the, my favorites of all the ones she did it, so I hope you can see up close how that stitching looks when it's done. It's really pretty. All right. I also um, want to show you this one. So this one was even more complicated. So on this one, we started by marking a grid with vertical lines an inch and a quarter apart. And then we marked 30 degree diamonds going both directions. And what that did is it created this great hexagonal pattern that really enhances this mostly solid fabric. Marianne did say getting everything to line up was kind of a challenge. So for the purse, when she did it, she just did it vertical lines and she spaced them random um, distances apart because the fabric had such a random design. So that was much easier, but as you can see, you can get two very different looks depending on how you want to do it. This fun little set um, was sent to it. This was a fabric that arrived in the mail one day from QT Fabrics, and they sent us just a yard of fabric, of two fabrics. So we got this one, which was a really pretty floral. It gradated from light to dark, so you can kind of see the two colors. And we had, and then they also sent this purple kind of circular floral. We had just enough fabric to cut out the pieces for the tote and purse. So what we did is we used the darker areas for the tote and we used the lighter areas for the purse. And then we did the purple on the lining of the tote, the purple on the lining of the purse. And then as I said, we um, took that purple and did it on the outside here. Because we had such a little bit of fabric, um, we barely had enough to cut the pieces for this. So we skipped quilting completely on the tote, but on the purse, we did 60 degree diamonds. You can probably see it a little bit better on the back, spacing them one inch apart, and then doing a second line about a quarter inch away from, from the first line. So quite a bit of quilting on the purse, um, none on the tote. So, 
So usually the pattern tells you to quilt the exterior, but on here we skipped it. So if quilting is not your bag and you want a bag without quilting, as you can see, it works really well. That's also what we did on the um, leather look one that we showed in the video. Uh, Glow wanted to try one with a vinyl, and so we skipped quilting completely on both of these. And we also skipped the border on the front of the purse. So what she did on here, because she wasn't quilting, she cut out the soft and stable for the purse. She figured out where the magnet needed to be. She sewed the magnet just to the soft and stable, and then she laid her exterior fabric on the outside so that she didn't have to put the border on top to cover the magnet. So there you have it, the newest Biani pattern, night and day. I hope you enjoyed learning more about this versatile set, and I can assure you that these are projects you will enjoy making and using. As always, please remember to ask for the patterns and supplies at your local quilt shop. If they don't have them, they can certainly get them, either from us or from their favorite distributor. Remember, local quilt shops are the lifeblood of your sewing community, and we all need to do everything we can to keep them strong and in business. And of course, if you don't have a local quilt shop, you can also find them at Biani. We have been shipping patterns to our distributor and wholesale customers for at least the past couple of weeks, and I believe we are now shipping to retail customers as well. Let's go on to a question that Brooke has posted. I only see one so far. The um, question is, can the boxed bottom boxed area be finished with a binding? So I assume that you're talking about on the tote because the one on the purse is finished with the binding. Let me drag out one of these. So on the purse, well, there isn't a box bottom. So on the purse, there is a binding, little bindings. So first you sew across the bottom. You bind this bottom seam. Well, you bind the side seam, then you bind the bottom seam, and then you bind the two little boxed bottoms. I assume that's what you're talking about. If you're talking about this, this is really ingenious how this goes together. You may have noticed in the video, you um, quilt your exterior fabric and then you shape it. And then you take that shape and put it with the soft and stable attach. You put it on top of your rectangular piece that's cut and, and has fusible interfacing attached to it. And you sew all the way around it. So you have no raw edges to, that you would need to cover with a binding. And then you turn the bag um, right side out through the opening that's left in the welt pocket. So it's, it's pretty ingenious how it works. Leslie's putting a note saying, maybe you could show the quilting again on the blue bag. Are you talking about, I'll show both of them because I'm not sure which one you're talking about. So this is, I loved both of these. So this one is done with the vertical lines. Um, we, we got this idea from somebody who sent us pictures. And uh, so we kind of copied somebody else's idea, but we did vertical lines here. And then we did the lines here. Um, Marianne said she felt like this would be the most obvious if it wasn't straight. So she wanted to make sure she got the vertical lines first and then went from there. Okay, Leslie says, no, not that, not that we'll one, this one. Leave it. Um, hold it still? Yeah, or just, you know, don't even hold it. And then I can focus in on it. Yeah. It's so dark, it might be hard to see on. Jake's going to try adjusting the levels on the camera, it looks like. I could see, okay, I could see doing that on a solid fabric, and that could really give some, a fun look. All right, so thank you guys for being with us today, and uh, let us, be sure to send us pictures of the um, bags that you make. We can't wait to see them. We want to remind everybody that the All Iowa Shop Hop that started in early June is running all the way through the end of July. 
Uh, we had mentioned that on our Facebook Live earlier. Again, there are almost 100 shops participating in this shop hop. So just go to their website. We'll put up the link um, so you can learn more about the shops that are participating, the exclusive fabrics that they've got, and all the exciting prizes that they're doing. And as always, we'd love to see any photos of any Biani models or displays that you see during your visits. We want to move on now to our featured local quilt shop of the week. As you know, one of our very favorite events each year is the local quilt shop contest, which we celebrate in February. And during that contest, we encourage sewists to vote for their favorite quilt shop and share a little bit about what makes them special. So to continue the fun and support of local businesses, each week we highlight a store and some of their voter submissions during Live with Annie. So today we are traveling to Decorah, Iowa to feature our friends at Red Roxy Quilt Company. Store owners Roxanne Schnitzler and Jessica Radiski are a mother-daughter team who were our guests almost exactly a year ago on Live with Annie when they shared tips for edge-to-edge -edge quilting using an embroidery machine. If you'd like to review that episode or watch it for the first time, just go to byannie.com live and then scroll down to the past episodes section. Once you get there, scroll to the week number 27 episode. Since we last spoke with them, Roxanne has gone into semi-retirement and Jess is holding down the fort. Roxanne still comes in to teach classes, but is said to be greatly enjoying a bit of a break. The store is known as a non-traditional, bright and lively gathering place, and Roxanne, Jess, and their team work hard to make it a happy place for local and visiting quilters. Red Roxy was featured in the Spring-Summer 2021 edition of Quilt Sampler magazine, which is published by Better Homes and Gardens. This biannual publication features the top 10 quilt shops in North America, and it is quite an honor to be included. Red Roxy also has a beautiful retreat center called Red's Retreat and Guest House, which is in downtown Decorah. Perched on a corner lot directly across the street from the famed Versterheim Norwegian American Museum, the three-level farmhouse, which was built in 1914, will comfortably seat you, sleep you, and 12 additional guests in five bedrooms scattered on three levels. There is also 1,100 feet of shared workspace with great natural light and in-floor heat to keep you cozy in winter. There are quilts on the beds and walls and lots of room to spread out and work. It really looks like a delightful place to gather with friends. We just might need to plan a biannual retreat there, don't you think? Voters in the LQS contest raved about the friendly, knowledgeable staff and the great selection of fabrics and other items at Red Roxy. Collins said, as a man in the quilting world, the reception I receive is iffy at some quilt and fabric stores. Red Roxy has been welcoming and helpful from day one. They never make me feel unwelcome or make me feel that I'm only important if I spend money. Rose shared, they have wonderful classes. If you have trouble picking out fabric, they help. All the workers are so knowledgeable. And they have many samples and lots of kits, so you don't have to spend lots of time looking for the right fabric. Ryan said you can always depend on one of the team to suggest an out-of-the-box suggestion for borders or bindings. I love their ideas. With all the different personalities that work there, it's fun to get different opinions. Not only is Red Roxy participating in the All Iowa Shop Hop, but they also have a Biani trunk show on display through the end of July. So if you're going to be in their area of the country or in the mood for a road trip, be sure to stop in, check out the Biani models and everything else, and be sure to tell them that Annie sent you. So thank you again to everyone who joined us today. We are going to be back next week at 2 p.m. Mountain Time with a really fun episode of Live with Annie when we'll introduce our updated Get Out of Town 2.1 pattern. We'll have lots of fun models to show, so be sure to join us then. And until then, happy stitching! <laughs>